Okay, now we're going to take a look at lesson 8.3, which is factoring in expression x squared plus bx plus c. When factoring, uh, we're looking at a couple specific things, and that's going to help guide us into what we're going to be doing. The first one is we're looking at, is c a positive? If c is positive, then we look at the next key focus point which is B. If C is positive and B is positive then we know that both of the factors are positive. Okay. If C is positive and B is negative then we know that both of the factors are negative. What we're trying to find is what are the factors of this number that have a sum of this number in here. And so that's what we work on. So for example, if we factored x squared plus 7x plus 10, we're looking at what are the factors of 10 that equal 7. Okay, So we need factors of 10 that sum up to 7. Okay, 1 and 10 is a, is a factor of 10, but those equal 11 when we add them together. 2 and 5 are the other factors of 10, and they equal 7. So we're going to use the numbers 2 and 5 what we're going to do is place them in x plus 2 and x plus 5. We automatically know that the, the form of this when factored out is going to be x plus and x plus because we know that both factors have to be positive because c and b are both positive. So plus 2 and plus 5 and what we do is we use our uh, FOIL method to check our answer and we, when we multiply them all out, we see that we get x squared plus 7x plus 10, which is what we started with. In the second example here, we have a situation where c is positive, but b is negative. So that's our second category here. c is positive, b is negative, so we know that both factors are negative. So right away, we know that we're going to have something that says x minus times x minus. Okay, we automatically know that. But the key is, what are these two numbers? So we're going to look at what are the factors of 18 that will add up to negative 9. 1 and 18 are factors of 18. So to get a positive 18, we go negative 1 and negative 18. But when we add those together, we're going to get negative 19. Negative 2 times negative 9 will give us positive 18. But when we add those together, we get negative 11. So that doesn't work. Negative 3 and negative 6 multiplied together gives us positive 18. And when we add those two numbers together, we get negative 9. So this is our winner. So again, we're just going to plug in negative 3 and negative 6. We know that we have it correct because we know this is the form that we're going to have to have. We can use FOIL to check our answer. And again, x squared plus 9x plus 18 is the same thing that we started with. So once we identify this little part right here, this is very, very key, then it makes setting up our uh, factored equation that much easier. So if we look at the following, we know that we have a positive 16, we know that we have a positive 10, so we know that we're going to end up with something that says x plus times x plus something. So we need the factors of 16 that sum up to 10. So let's look at 1 and 16. We know that that's not going to work because when we add those together we get 17. So if we look at the next factors are 2 and 8. That multiplied together gives us 16. And when we add those together we get 10. So we found our example. So we're going to plug 2 in here and 8 in here and we're done. We could test, check our answer if we needed to. x times x gives us x squared. x times 8 gives us 8x. 2 times x gives us 2x. And 2 times 8 gives us 16. We add our 2x and our 8x, we get 10x. We come to the second example. And we have a situation where we have a positive and a negative. So we know that we have to have a situation where we're going to have x and x. 
And right away we know that both of these numbers are going to be negative numbers because our middle number, 9, is negative. So we need to find out what are the factors of 20 that sum up to negative 9. So let's start with 1 and 20, negative 1 and negative 20 I should say, and we're going to get a negative 21. We can go to negative 2 and negative 10, and we're going to end up with negative 12. Negative 4 and negative 5 gives us a positive 20, and this gives us negative 9. So we know that it's x minus 4 times x minus 5. Now, what if we get to this situation where c is negative? So we have another set of rules or another set of parameters to deal with. When c is negative, then again we still start to refer back to our middle number, our b. So if c is negative and b is positive, we know that the larger factor must be positive. If c is negative and b is negative, then we know that the larger factor must be negative. Now we're talking about the larger factor in terms of the two that make up the number for c. So again, let's take a look at some examples. x squared plus 8x minus 20. We see that c is negative, so we know that we have to find factors of negative 20 that add up to positive 8. So right away, because this number is positive, we know that the, the bigger of the two factors has to be a positive. So we start to look at negative 1 and 20, and those added together, we get 19. So this is the smaller one, so this one has to be a positive. Negative 2 and positive 10 gives us negative 20, and when we add them together, we get positive 8, which is what we're looking for. So this is the correct answer. If we test it out, negative 4 and 5, we see that negative 4 times 5 equals negative 20. 5 is bigger, so it's positive, but the difference when we add those together is we get 1 instead of 8. So it has to be x minus 2 times x plus 10, because this is a positive and this is the negative. And we can test it out again using the FOIL. When we get a situation where we get x or where c is negative and b is negative, now we're talking about the larger of the two factors has to be the negative number. We know that we're still going to end up with one positive, one negative, but it's just the reverse case that we just talked about. So we're going to look at the factors of 28, negative 28, that add up to a negative 3. So 1 and negative 28, since this is the bigger of the two, it's the negative one, but that, when added together, equals negative 27. 2 and negative 14 equals negative 12 when added together. 4 and negative 7 equals negative 28, and when we add those together, we get our negative 3, so we found our examples. x plus 4, because this is positive, and then x minus 7, because this is the negative and then we go ahead and test it using FOIL. So, let's take a look at this. We know that we have a negative, and we know that we have a positive B, which is the number 1. This is the same as saying positive 1. So we know we're going to have the factors of negative 20 that have the sum of 1. So let's take a look at that we know that the bigger of the two has to be the positive number. So we'll go negative 1 times 20, and we add that together, we get 19, which doesn't work. If we go negative 2 and 10, we add those together, we get positive 8, which doesn't work. What about negative 4 and 5? They make negative 20 when multiplied together, and when we add those together, we get positive 1. So that's got to be our winner, x minus 4 times x plus 5. Our last example, we have a negative, answer, a negative number for c and a negative number for b. So that means that our 
factor has to be, the larger the factors have to be negative. So we're looking for factors of negative 4 that add up to negative 3. So if we look at positive 1 and negative 4, we, hit, we find our solution right away. When I add those together, you get negative 3. We could try positive 2 and negative 2, but you see when we add those together, we get 0, so that's not going to work. So we end up with x plus 1 times x minus 4. And again, we could check both of them if we wanted to using FOIL. Hopefully, seeing those examples, it makes things a little bit more clearer when factoring um, the expression x squared plus bx plus c.